Professor Salim Abdul Karim, welcome to SABC News. Thank you for joining us to speak about your debut novel, Stand Up for Science. Let me take you back to about November 2019, when the world had confirmed its first COVID-19 patient. Share your initial reaction with us. So once I learned about the sequence of this virus, I knew that there was a potential threat. But I think I was still in a bit of denial. Maybe this virus won't spread as fast. Maybe it won't spread in our setting. And I was jolted out of that denial by around mid-February. It became clear by the end of January that the situation was not going to control itself. And by mid-February, I had come to the conclusion we needed to take action. Come the 5th of March, and there's the announcement. The first case of COVID-19 in South Africa. It happens to be a couple who just come back from Italy, and they lived just around our doorstep from our clinic in Hilton. And that's when there was no longer any doubt in my mind that we were going to have a severe pandemic. As scientists began to rapidly work towards a COVID vaccine and manufacturers then began to produce these, concerns began to emerge, uh, particularly for developing nations, on how the rollout would happen. Who would be prioritized? Funding issues for developing nations and concerns of inequitable access just talk us through how South Africa managed this. We wanted to support COVAX. Politically, that was the right decision. From a logistical point of view, it made sense. From a scientific point of view, it was the correct approach. Why was it a correct approach? COVAX was the mechanism set up by the World Health Organization to create equitable distribution of the vaccine. But once we decided to go with COVAX, our country equivocated. We had a deadline to make our first payment. That deadline was in September of 2020. We missed that deadline. We were given a 30-day extension to October. We missed that deadline. We eventually paid our first installment to COVAX in December. That meant we were now at the back of the queue in COVAX. You've spoken to us about, you know, your rigorous days, long hours at Caprisa. You're on advisory boards around the world, scientific panels. Uh, days of travel presenting papers to some of the world's most, you know, um, renowned audiences in the scientific community. But when you come home to your family here in Durban, what happens? Is this your safe space? I'm a Durbanite, through and through. <laughs> I was born here. I live here. I spent almost all my life living here, except for when I studied in the U.S. and the U.K. And I plan on dying here. I've even bought my grave in the, in the cemetery. And then I go to all my favorite haunts. You know, yes, on, on, a, on a Saturday morning, I stop <laughs> at Little Gujarat. Oh. I'll stop there and I get my masala dosa or I get my samosa and I get a chance to talk to Bumika and Tejas and we'll chat about what's happening in the world. I walk around the city. I enjoy the city just because it feels a comfort zone. Abdul Karim also spoke to the support of his wife, Professor Kuresha Abdul Karim, and he reminisced on study time with his mother. And she would wake up as well at 4 a.m. and make me a cup of tea, and she would just sit across the way from me. She would be reading uh, uh, the Quran or reading something, and just to be there for me. And that's... It's hard to place a value on that. And in many ways, Kuresha has that incredible ability. She's always there. She's always, I, I know that if there's any challenge or any issue, that she's always there and she has my back. 
The father of three proudly spoke to how the birth of his first child, Safura, changed his outlook on life. It changed my worldview. I, I, I changed my priorities. From being somebody, you know, who was totally focused on work, 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 and I began to see another side of life. <clears throat> I loved caring for her, looking after her. What do you want your legacy to be? You know, that's a big question. <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> I think that I'd like for them to say two things. The first is that what I have contributed has helped make the world a better place. That I left behind a legacy that would see infectious diseases become a thing of the past, or at least not as severe a threat as they are today. And the second, I hope they would say, was that he was a good father and a good person. I hope that if I leave that legacy of having left the, better, the world a better place and being known for having been a good father and a good person, I would die happy. Minoshni Pillay, SABC News, Durban.